folks have had a number of people who have watched one of my sort of popular uh, InDesign tutorials and have asked me to talk a little bit more about color and the color swatches and how you use colors for, um, you know, for uh, borders and things uh, or, or to change the color of text or whatever. And so I'm going to do something just very simple here. I just opened up a page. It's an 8.5 by 11 page. Uh, as you can see here, it's still in pockets and all this. I like in my preferences here to go to units and increments and be in inches. I'm going to go ahead and do that just because I just enjoy that a little better. We might do something that comes down to a, a size here. So there we go. We've got an 8.5 by 11 page. Put a, 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 just a picture in here. So I went and got the uh, picture tool here, the rectangle frame tool. And I'm going to draw something here. And I think I'm going to go, I'm going to go to Command D on my uh, Mac. I guess it would be Control D if you're on a PC. I do PCs too. I'm going to use this weird art here. It's called Shadun Fitting uh, Fill fill Frame Proportionally, right? There we go. Now, now it's a little bit better looking. So the reason I pulled this in here is it's got a lot of color in it. Uh, I'm going to do this. I'll do a window. I'm going to do, or excuse me, I'm going to do a view. I'm going to do display performance. We're going to do high quality display so you can see these things in their full glory. Seemingly, not trying to brag on my art. My art is kind of weird. What it is, it's nebulous. I find uh, photos of Hubble Space Telescope images I think are very cool. So there's actually something up there in space uh, that looks like that, and then I try to paint it. Anyway, I'm going to do a Command Zero to go back to full screen. So I have swatches open over here. A lot of times this will be closed, and you know, and, and you know, people will say, "Well, I want to do some text. I'm gonna, let me go ahead and put some text in here too." So I just have some lorem ipsum Greek text that's already on the uh, that was already on my clipboard, and so I've gone ahead and pasted that in here. So previous tutorials I've shown how to change the text and everything. Just for the heck of it, though, let's go ahead and do this again, and I'll change this from Minion Pro to something like Gil Sands. And we'll do regular pro, I guess. Here we go. That's pro light, actually. It's not bad. That's not a bad font. So um, let's say that we want this part, this lorem ipsum sit here, to be a title. And so I'm going to go ahead and tell it to be maybe bigger than this one. I, I, I'm clicking a little up here to make the, the thing taller or the uh, font bigger. I'll go from light to uh, bold. Okay, so now we've got a lorem ipsum sit dollar or dollar sit. And so maybe you want this to be one of these reds or something here. Now, the way you handle color, a lot of people go over here and they start looking at this color here. Now, now you can go click on this and it allows you to pick colors. And you can go in here and mix your colors, fix your CMYK, uh, colors, CMYK colors the way you want them to be. Or you can do RGB, whatever. Uh, I'm going to close that though. What I usually like to do is work in swatches. So like say there's a red here that I like already, uh, but I don't really particularly like this red. But let's say I want to use this red for the color of this font. Uh, but maybe I want it to be a little darker. I'm going to show you several ways to do this. I'm going to copy that color. So there we have a copy of it. I'm going to call this, uh, I'm going to click, double click on it. Let's call it Tony's Red. <clears throat> so, and then I'm going to double click on that here. And I can go in and I can actually darken this up a little bit. Maybe I want it to be... A little more that way. Maybe you want to go just a little bit more. Go back this way. It's a little tiny bit more cyan, more of a wine type color. So there I've got a new color that I can use. And if I want this text to be that color, I just highlight over it. I make sure that the little text, the little T here is highlighted down here, right? Uh, if you do the outside one, this one right here, you're going to do a stroke around the, the text. And you put a line around it all. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to make sure that's that's highlighted. Then I'm going to pick my Tony's red. So that's how you pick the color. But say that's not the color I really want. I'd really rather have a color that's sort of in here. Well, you can go to your little eyedropper tool here, right? And look, look, here's another way. Let's just do it this way to make it see if I'm going to highlight this first. Then I'm going to go to the eyedropper tool and I'm going to find a red in here I kind of like. I kind of like that one, Mike. Okay. So here it shows me the red that I've gotten. So let's say that I like this red, or let's, let's pick, maybe let's pick something we can tell a little bit different. Let's pick one of these purples up in here, even though I don't really particularly want to use this purple. Let's pick this one. Now let's look. Now you see that really it did pick that purple. But let's say that I want to put this purple into over here to save it for later. Well, I, if I highlight the text again, then I can go over here where the T is. I can click on this, and I can I actually right-click on it. I can say Add to Swatches, and look over here. Here it is. And if I want to title this again, yeah, you can double click on these and this kind of thing will come up. And you got the, you see this thing that says name with color value. If you want if you want to, you can just leave it on your, with your red, green, blue. Or you can go in here and you can name it. You can call it Tony's Purple. Ah, darn it. And we'll say, okay, it's more like a magenta, isn't it? 
So anyway, there you go. That's how you would change. That's how you would set colors. So you can make as many colors as you want to. Now let's say that, you know, maybe I'll, I want this dollar set here to be a, a different shade of the same color. So say I've got Tony's purple. I know this is Tony's purple, but I want this to be 50% of Tony's purple. So what it's going to do, it's going to actually give you 50% of that color. When I click off of this for a second, you can see now I have this you know, lighter version of the very same color. It really almost like, to me, it almost like mixes white in with it. It's what it does. Now, the same kind of thing is going to hold true for if I want to put a stroke on this picture. I'll go over here and click on the stroke. I've got the picture highlighted. I'll go over here and click on the little uh, stroke thing here, not the, the uh, in, in part or the fill, but the stroke part. And let's say I want to put something just hideous on here, this yellow on that, on the outside of that. And uh, I'll make it where we can see it a bit better. I'll go up about that many. And so there we go. We have something that just looks absolutely terrible. But that's okay. We're just having fun. We're just learning how this works. So this is how you do um, uh, colors if you actually use swatches. And you make as many swatches as you want to. Now, yeah, this, this actually might not look bad if we go back to about 30% color here. Funny how sometimes the bright, ugly colors can look pretty good. I'm going to um, go here and go to preview. And yeah, it doesn't look, that doesn't look terrible. It's not a good looking layout or anything by any uh, you know, stretch of the imagination. But there you go. Now let's say you want a box here, like this text box, to have a color inside it. You can certainly do that. We go here and pick this green. And we could pick a uh, you know a shade of that that might not be too horribly hideous. And there we go. Now you know naturally most people are going to want the, their text to sit inside that, and, and we can certainly go in and change our margins and things like that. A lot of times, just for the sake of what's easy, this is just me. What I do, you might not want to do it or not. You might do, you might not want to. Is a lot of times I'll just actually do it this way. I actually pull it inside myself. And I'll take a, a, a an actual box or something and pull it to the outside. Now, see, I could turn the uh, let's do object arrange send to back. So I had a, a red selected. But let's say that I want this this box on the outside here to be the same color as this green. All I have to do is go here, grab that eyedropper, and click on that, and it'll turn it green. So now I've actually got a box inside a box. Is what I got when I do that. You can see it. I'll go back over here and turn the uh, normal back on here, so we can see there are our guidelines. So this is just a quick start as to how you would work with colors. Now we can do gradients. I think what I'll do is probably not start that ball of wax right now, but do a, sec a second uh, tutorial where we start start showing how to gradate colors, right? To go from a, a, like a darker version of a color to another color or to the same color, but a more saturated version of that color. But this is just it, folks. This is how you start in InDesign playing around with colors. So um, there's a lot we can do, a lot to be said about this. So let's come back to it, that, some more things in a future tutorial. And we'll talk about gradients. We'll also talk about taking grayscale uh, photos and making them whatever color you want to, which is sometimes a really cool little uh, trick. Peace to all who watch. Subscribe if you like.